Chain fire. What is that? Why is it dangerous? What causes it? How do you avoid it? Well, that's the topic of today's video. I'm Dustin and you're watching Guns of the West. I recently did a video about percussion caps and in the comments section I got a lot of questions and comments that led to another discussion on chain fires. So I decided chain fires deserve their very own video. I won't be demonstrating one on purpose, but I do have a couple video examples of them when they have happened accidentally on camera. And I'll be talking about it too, just pointing out parts of the gun and how chain fires can occur. And for the demonstration gun here, we're using the third model Dragoon. It's got nice big parts that should make it easy for you to see. Well, let's dive in. Much like modern revolvers, these cap and ball revolvers have multiple firing chambers inside of a single cylinder. But unlike modern revolvers, these do not take metallic cartridges. Now I realize there are cartridge conversion kits you can do and that'll put a cartridge cylinder in there. I've even done that on this channel. But typically, and generally speaking, that's not how they work. Let's take this apart. Pull this hammer to half cock. Got the wedge, and we're just going to take a look at the cylinder of a cap and ball revolver. And again, this is a third model Dragoon. The front end of it looks very much like a modern one, but at the rear, notice the chambers are not bored through. Instead, they have these nipples threaded in to take percussion caps. Again, they don't take metallic cartridges. Instead, you're putting loose powder into each chamber followed by a bullet, and then you can put some grease, or some people like to put a lubricated felt wad between the powder and the bullet, bullet or ball. And then a percussion cap is placed on the nipple, which acts like a primer on a metallic cartridge on a modern revolver. Well, with that being said, the load is not as protected as it would be inside of a metallic cartridge like this. So if you're not careful, and if things don't fit just right, the fire from the explosion of one load going off can get into the other next to it, or maybe even multiple, and set them off as well. Either from the front with fire getting past a bullet or a ball, or from the rear with caps not being put on tightly, or perhaps caps that are not the right size, fire can get underneath those and also set off multiple chambers at a time. Let's take a look at a video example now of a chain fire that happened to me when I was shooting a Lamat revolver. Now that first shot you saw me take with the Lamat actually went off just fine, but the second one was a chain fire. And you may be thinking it was not overly obvious as an observer that that had happened, but it was pretty obvious as the shooter. It was a lot more recoil and in person, it had a lot more sound and even a little bit of a double sound as you could hear two shots going off. Now when I was shooting the Lamat that day, I had a very hard time getting any of the caps I had to fit. So I'm sure that my chain fire happened at the rear with fire getting from one over to the other and getting under a cap. Here's a photo of the kind of fire we're talking about. When you're shooting, this happens very fast, and especially in daylight, you might not be able to see it. But just look at all that fire. This picture is not even a chain fire. This is a shot going off perfectly normally and everything's going right. But you can see a lot of fire at the front of the cylinder and at the rear where the nipples are. So both need to be protected. Now let's take another look at a video example. This one happened to my friend Duke Frazier from the Duke Frazier Productions YouTube channel, and I'm sharing this with permission. You'll see him fire three shots. The first two go off as they should, but pay extra attention to the third one. chain fire. Now that you've seen a couple of examples of chain fires on camera, an important topic to go over would be what is the danger of it? When the two chambers go off, why is that dangerous? Well, let's take a look at the gun here. One only, obviously, is lined up with the barrel. So, obviously that's the one that we want to go off. If others do, look at some of the things that might be in the path. If you have one of these over here fire, 
You've got your wedge here that could get hit by a projectile. And granted, it won't be as powerful as it had, you know, would be if it had gone through a barrel, but it's still going to be a powerful projectile. And hitting the wedge there or over on this side, both of those things could happen or you hit that screw. It could affect the way things fit and the way your gun goes together, which is going to affect the overall safe operation of the gun. Down here at the bottom, if that one down in there goes off, that's going right into your rammer, which is going to put a lot of stress on the rammer itself and also this screw here and that one there. Not to mention this latch system up here is going to take some of the brunt of that. So it can be very hard on your gun. Now this is a steel frame revolver, very strong. Some of you are shooting brass frame revolvers. I even have one myself and as you probably know, they need to shoot lighter loads. Shooting two, three or four at a time in the case of a chain fire, that can put a lot of undue stress on those brass frames and cause them to wear out a lot more you know, prematurely. So how do we avoid this and make sure a chain fire doesn't happen? Really, it has almost everything to, just to do with using the correct ammunition components. Now, when it happened to Duke, he went on to say that had he used a lubricated felt wad between his powder and ball, it probably would have prevented it, which means the ball was probably the issue. His happened at the front. Mine happened at the rear, so using correct caps would have helped. And like I said, I really struggled to find caps that would work and paid the price in the form of a chain fire there. Luckily in a safe direction and you know no harm done ultimately. So we need to use the right stuff. This is 44 caliber and you're going to find that with Pieta and Uberti reproductions, not without exception, but typically the ball that they tend to like is this 0.454 inch diameter round ball. And of course, there are conical bullets available too. You've seen me use some from Arizgon bullet molds, and those generally work very, very well too. And then for the caps, at the time of this recording, caps are very hard to come by. So this information, you know, at this time might seem, sound frustrating, but what you really generally want for these Uberti and Pieta reproductions, this one being Uberti, is the Remington number 10 percussion caps. These seem to fit the very, very best. If you're not able to get those, next best in my opinion is CCI number 11. These are Magnum caps. Uh, those will work fine. Also the regulars, as long as they're number 11s. Those have the same internal diameter as a Remington number 10. They're just a little shorter. So if you use these, they don't have quite as good of a grip on the nipples. So they could back up a little under recoil. So you may just want to keep an eye on that and perhaps check to see if they need to be pushed down in between shots. So those will work. These are generally the best. Now, I hear a lot of people say, you always need to use a lubricated felt wad between your powder and your ball because it's meant to prevent chain fires or to put bullet lube over the bullet or ball to prevent chain fires. Now, just to be clear, that's not what those things are for. The bullet lube and the lubricated felt wads have more to do with keeping fouling soft in your barrel so that your gun keeps running smoothly and keeps running accuracy. Your rifling's not getting all gummed up and caked with hard fouling. However, I will say this. I'm not going to say it entirely does not help prevent chain fires because if things go wrong, especially at the front end of the cylinder, you know, if a bullet didn't quite fit right, then uh, that last... Uh, or that uh, lube or that felt wad could be a good last line of defense that may stop a spark or a flame from getting in there. So again, that's not what those things are for, but a good line of defense. Um, I typically don't use the felt wads. Sometimes I do, but usually what I use is just a bullet lube. I actually have my own that I make, the Guns of the West lube. And if you like Guns of the West products, of course, there's a link in the description down below. Now, when you're loading the gun, again, you want to put your powder in, Put the ball in, make sure it's the right size. If you're not quite sure the right size, a good indicator, it doesn't have to do this, but a good easy way to tell is it will shave a ring of lead off when you push the ball into the chamber, which means it was just a little bigger the cham than the chamber and therefore is giving a great seal. And then again, if you like, you can add some lube over the top of that. And again, get the caps on good and snug to make sure that that doesn't happen. If it does happen, uh, always follow the gun safety rules so if it does happen to you you know it's not going to be the end of the world hopefully and when it happened to me I was out in a safe area gun was in a safe direction nobody else around that could take a piece of lead coming from the side of the gun or anything like that but that is something that could happen in addition to damaging the gun you could have lead frag uh, fragments coming out and going different ways 
But anyway, that's what a chain fire is, that's what causes it, and that's how we prevent it, or at least give the best chance of preventing a chain fire. Well, as always, I really hope you enjoyed this video today, maybe even found it helpful. Please don't forget to click that like button down below and subscribe to the channel so you can see more videos. You'll also see in the description where to find me on social media, a link to the new Guns of the West channel on Rumble, and where to find great Guns of the West products. Thank you so much for watching.